This podcast is brought to you in part by ChoiceRealtyConnect.com. Whether you're buying or selling home, condo, or any type of property, trust Amanda to help match you with up to three top agents in your area. ChoiceRealtyConnect.com. Hey, all you rock stars from Washington, D.C. This is the Rock of the Money Podcast, episode 123. It's time to talk about saving, investing, and protecting all of your hard-earned monies. We're here to coach you along that path to retirement and financial independence. I'm Craig, your Dave Ramsey Master Financial Coach. Along with Amanda, she is a corporate in-house lawyer and real estate referral agent. And we're so grateful you've joined us. Check us out at Facebook at facebook.com slash rockonthemoney and the website at rockonthemoney.com. How are you doing, Amanda? Hey, I'm well. You know, I was thinking about why haven't I played... So this is a carryover from our last episode. Why haven't I played the Oculus Quest in the last three months? And you know what I realized? It's because I've been spending my extra time learning German instead. Why are you learning German? <laughs> this is the, so, of, of all the languages you could learn, why German? Yeah, so um, I'm putting it out into the universe that our, that I'm going to go to Germany for our next move. Now, this is not certain at all, but I figure... What? You're yeah. supposed to come to the Pentagon. <laughs> no. Yeah. That on it. So it's going to be highly disappointing if we don't end up moving to Germany. And I suddenly know German, but yeah, I, I'm a big believer in positive thinking and putting the thoughts into the universe to make what you want to happen. Well, Germany is amazing. That's that according to my, I, I did one of those, um, give up your personal information, DNA kit things. Yeah. And I'm 80. I am, <laughs> Give I'm up like, your personal information. Yeah, yeah whatever. Exactly. They are, like, that's exactly why I haven't done it. Just yeah, so whatever. Know. I'm already on Google. I have a Google phone. Who cares? Whatever. It's done. Uh, 80, almost 80%. I'm almost purebred. Everybody else has this long list. 10% this, 5%. This. No, I'm like 80% right in that region where Switzerland, France, and Germany meet. Mm-hmm. Right there. And they came right to Pennsylvania and uh, right below Pennsylvania where I'm located. So, I basically have done nothing with my DNA for my ancestry. They yeah. migrated to Southern Pennsylvania and I'm basically right in the same region they migrated to. So, um, yeah. but Germany is uh, my homeland, apparently. Uh-huh. Yeah, I so have been we were there. talking about, well, where would we like to go next if we had our pick? And that's what he said. And I'm like, I don't want to learn German. And then I, the next morning, I'm like, well, I guess I better learn German. <laughs> no, no, no. Germany is really cool. Really yeah. cool. Really. Yeah, I think you're going to enjoy that. Yeah. So it was never like a lifelong dream or anything to learn German, but uh, I'm working at it every day for half an hour or so. You are supposed to come to the Pentagon. Well, who knows? It might still happen. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Hey, Stop uh, putting negative energy into my universe, Craig. Okay. Personally, I'd rather go to Germany than Washington, D.C. to be based yeah. at. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, what we got on this podcast? We have six social media questions once again that covers a broad range of topics. Perfect. Here's number one. I am not eligible for a Roth IRA due to income limits. You've brought mm-hmm. that up many times. Uh, should I go full 15% into my company 401k, which matches up to 6%? Or should I put the maximum $6,000 into a traditional 401k? Hmm. And then the remaining of my 15% into my company 401k. I yeah, think they, I wouldn't complicate I think they got some terminology mixed up there. When they mean maximum 6,000 into a traditional IRA is what they should have meant? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, so this is happening more and more with some of the people in our group, which is awesome that you've worked hard to get your income to a certain <laughs> level that unfortunately the losing end of it is that you don't, you aren't allowed to make Roth yeah. IRA contributions anymore. Congratulations, everybody. Yeah, you're winning. Yeah. Uh, so a couple of things here. One, you can, depending on your level of sophistication, Uh, Well, first of all, since you're getting a match, don't leave that money on the table. You Mm. definitely should be contributing to your 401k at least up to whatever the match amount is. So Mm -hmm. if it's 6%, then that's definitely what you should be contributing to get that full match. Then if you'd like to take advantage of the Roth IRA, there's a backdoor way to do it by Mm -hmm. putting your money into a traditional IRA and then immediately recharacterizing it into a Roth IRA. And you'll have to work with your provider to do that. 
But if you do it right away, then there shouldn't be any gains for you to pay taxes on. And this is fully legal, people. I just want to point that out. It is. It's kind of like a loophole thing. But yeah, you have to do it immediately. Flip it over. Right. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's the other option. So I would do that for the rest of the 15 percent unless that's more than six thousand dollars, because, again, you're still going to be capped at six thousand if you're not wanting to do that. And that's totally fine. You don't have to do that. Then I would do, just keep it simple and put the entire 15 percent into your 401k. There you go. Sounds good. I'm not going to add on to that. That was, that was awesome. Hey, uh, question number two. I love this one. Hey, how do you guys stay motivated when Murphy's Law constantly kicks you in the teeth? Earlier this year, I got into an accident. Luckily, insurance paid most of it, but the $1,000 deductible. Then, our air ducts needed cleaning because of our previous owners. And now, we have a burst water pipe that's leaking into our basement. So, the question is about motivation, yeah. Uh, I totally get it. First of all, I'm really sorry to hear you got in an accident, but the insurance paying it is not luck. It's that you were smart enough to have insurance in place and you chose the deductible limit of a thousand dollars. So not really luck. That's more of a, Hey, I planned ahead for this and I'm a responsible individual. Air ducts needing cleaning in the house. That's kind of just something that comes along with ownership and Mm -hmm. should be in, in your in your budget for the regular cost of home ownership. So I'm not sure that that is a kick in the teeth so much as this is just one of those things that happens with home cleaning. Just just like having your AC, your HVAC system service twice a year should be part of your your budget. Because if it's not, then yeah, you really, you will get kicked in the teeth because then your HVAC unit will go kaput and then it's really expensive. But I do get it that then when something water purse pipes or your dishwasher goes out or like, here's an example. I, I, this happens to me all the time where it seems like all at once things are happening. Yeah. Then it feels like kicking the teeth because if it were just like one thing a month, then you're like, yeah, this is just part of life. Right. Right. But I recently we went to turn on our hot tub and it wasn't working. So I had to call and get that repaired and it needed a whole new motor plus the service cost. So that was like $600. And then I was, we were floating in the pool last week and I'm like, you know, it's so people always say pools are so expensive, but ours is so easy. We just have to do, you know, throw in the, this once a month and we never have any problems with it. First of all, never say that. And then what happened? <laughs> Something happened, right? Yeah. So our, so our uh, pool filter motor or whatever is overheating this week. So now oh. I have to have someone come fix that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's it's just kind of all happens at once. Just like last year, the dishwasher and the refrigerator both decided to act up at the same time. Or, you know, your toilet clogs and you have a backup and you need to call a plumber to come snake right. out your houses. It, all, it, it always seems to happen at the same time. And that's just because you had other plans for your money. Yeah, it's called life. It's life. It's just the way it happens. And the more stuff you own, that stuff can break. Mm-hmm. Or you need stuff done medically. I mean, it's just the way it works. Right. And uh, But staying motivated, list out all those costs and what would happen if you didn't have that emergency fund. Yes. So that's exactly where I was going to yeah. go next is the the spin I'm able to put on it now is thank goodness I have the money to pay for it, even though it's taking away from the other things I'd rather be paying for, you know, fun things. Uh, but at least you have that and you don't have to you know, suddenly you're not put in the poor house just because of it, or, you know, you're not putting huge amounts on a credit card or something like that. We, we stress that emergency funds so much in baby step uh, three, which is three to six months of your expenses uh, into a, into just regular savings account, not invested, just savings account. If you don't have that buffer, you end up doing what Amanda just said. You put it on the credit card at whatever interest rate it could be. It could be 27%. 70, I don't know what it is, but the people go down the spiral and once you keep doing that, then now you have to pay that off and then you're getting fees on top of that, interest on it, and then you can't get out. You're trapped by the credit card companies or however you got the money, like title companies, 400%, all this payday loan stuff, and then you can't get out. The whole basic of that having that emergency fund is to keep that from happening so you can keep moving forward because Murphy will happen. Mm-hmm. That will happen. It is guaranteed to happen. 
<laughs> death yeah, and I mean, Murphy that, will just, happen. <laughs> it's just called adulting, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> but you got to be prepared for it. It's all Stuff part of planning. All the time. Yep. And sometimes Man. it clumps together and it feels like, yeah, you're getting. It does cold. feel like it. Yeah, it does feel like it. Hey, uh, question number three. I am debt free. I paid, congrats. Uh, I paid off $7,000 of debt this month. I don't feel any different, Amanda. <laughs> when, <laughs> when, is it, when is the good feeling supposed to kick in? <laughs> well, there's not a fairy that comes and like taps you on the head and gives you a magical feeling or anything like, like that. Like participation trophy or something? Nothing? No. Right. No, no trophies and no party that anyone's going to throw for you except for yourself internally. So um, I think this is normal, actually. I think you've you've been in this one set of like men, you're on one mental path, you're gazelle intense, you're, you're paying off debt. And then when it's over, you're like, well, now what? Right. Right. <laughs> so I think that's fine. The good feeling is going to kick in probably when next month rolls around and you don't have that bill. There you go. I think it'll probably take until then before you really have that feeling and you're like, oh, holy crap, I have a lot more money in my checking account this month. That's what happened to me. It's like once you have everything paid off and then now the money's not going out anymore. And then all yeah. of a sudden within a couple of months, like, holy crap, how do I have with $5,000 in my bank account? Yes. And, and you'll see it's how crazy. quickly that adds and up. So it, it, it might take a couple months of right. you not having those payments before you start to, say, to feel that i right. think you're probably not feeling it now because you just wrote the the last check and your your checking account reflects that right, right. you have nothing yeah mm -hmm. no and you're on baby step three now so now you need to build up your but you're going to build that up pretty rapidly because all that money you were dumping into debt is now going to a uh, emergency fund into a savings account and yeah. trust me you're like oh my god i was paying all that out that was mm -hmm. my shock i'm like how much money have I spent in my life that I wasted on debt? Well, and not just debt, on interest. Well, the, yeah, the interest part and trying to dig your way out because the interest is be constantly beating you down, keeps you in there. Yeah, it's terrible. But yeah, I think a couple months, I'd love to hear back from this person. Yeah, like, you're but right. I think that feeling's totally normal. You're not doing anything wrong. It's just, <laughs> it's just no fairy. <laughs> All right, we'll be back right after this. Uh, we're going to take a little break and uh, hear about... Uh, Choice Realty Connect.com. You we should are. use it. You're your little baby. Yes. Uh, we'll be back right for this. You're listening to Rock on the Money. there rock stars amanda here with choice realty connect.com are you about to sell your home or excited to buy your first or next home i'll be honored to help you find an expert to work with you in your local area at choice realty connect.com i'll help match you with up to three qualified licensed agents that specialize in your specific market Choice Realty Connect serves every zip code in all 50 states with a network of 15,000 top rated agents that are ranked within the top 5% for sales. Whether you're selling or looking for a condo, new construction, retreat, vacation property, or you're a first time home buyer, let me connect you with the perfect top agent today. ChoiceRealtyConnect.com. The choice is yours. Amanda Braun is a Florida licensed real estate with a brokerage Realty Connect. Rockland, USA. Welcome back to Rock on Money with Amanda and Craig. Facebook.com slash Rock on the Money is the page. And uh, Facebook, let's see, Rock on the Money .com. What's our website address? Rock on the Money .com. They, By the way, they just now changed all the Facebook pages to look differently again. Hmm. Good old Facebook. Good old Facebook. So, uh, yeah, things look a little differently across Facebook by now. I think everybody would have seen it by now. Happened on Monday. There were so many problems with it or last week. Maybe they've delayed it. I don't know. Um, hey, I got a question for you. Okay. Uh, curious. <laughs> what is a good grocery budget for two people? Thanks in advance. Well, so Craig. Yes. You, you've made a promise to this group the last couple of weeks. <laughs> well, my voice. <laughs> okay. Find... Number one, my voice is slowly coming back. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I've been waiting for my voice to come back to make these little tutorials and explain like 
you know, how to do a budget or at least have the percentages. Like here's a form, fill it out, enter all this stuff in, and then you can see what you call is a leak. Like I got too much money going out in the entertainment or food or my transportation. And that way you can rebalance everything and see what can I cut out of that? Because maybe I'm spending too much money in that one. Is that what you're going to get me on about? (laughs) Yeah, so I was because you've promised to post a graphic at least of the percentages. The recommended percentages of budget. Well, I could at least do that. I could do that. You can do that. You don't need a voice for that. No, I don't. So there are recommended percentages based on budgeting advice from Dave Ramsey's group. You can adjust it based on your priorities in life though, right? So um, Craig, just offhand, what is the recommended percentage for groceries? The recommended percentage is 5 to 15% for food. That's food across the board though, not just groceries. You know what I'm saying? So if we go out for eating or anything like that, um, 5 to 15%. Yeah, 5 to 15%. So that's a pretty big range. Some that's people are more yeah, than 5%. The 5% is probably more people who don't go out to eat. And right, just yeah, do yeah, groceries They're going to Aldi time. and yeah, saving money. Yeah, uh, but I can tell you what, it can easily match going out to eat if you're not a good planner and you end up going to the grocery store every single day for yeah. <laughs> if you're in a, like, what should we make for dinner today? And you have to go to the store and pick up the ingredients at that time and then pick up a bunch of other things that you probably don't need. And some of the, per- let me just run through these percentages real quick, just so people have an idea. These are directly from Dave Ramsey's coaching that we do. If you, if we ever sat down and worked with you on your thing, charitable gifts, which could be, you know, you could do that or not. It's 10 to 15 saving, 15% housing. 10 is- to 15% for charity. Yeah. You believe that? Well, mm-hmm. yeah, you know where that comes from, Amanda. The because tithing. Remember, yeah. Because that's thing, from yeah. Dave Ramsey. So 10% is your tithe. That's where I think that comes from. Uh, saving your money, 15%. Housing, we always say 25 to 35% of your total mortgage. It should not exceed that. Your utilities, 5 to 10%. Total, so mortgage, insurance, Yeah, taxes. your entire, yeah, your escrow, everything. 25 to 35%. With 35 being on the high side, we want to aim for 25. Yeah. Uh, utilities, 5 to 10%. Food, 5 to 15%. Transportation, 10 to 15%. That includes your car, uh, oil changes, tires over, you know, over that lifetime, you got to factor all that in, which you've talked about before. If you have a car payment, I mean, all that goes in there, yeah. right? Uh, clothing, two to 7%. If you're going to Ross, I guess, or not, or uh, <laughs> medical. I need to go there. To, maybe that's what I'll do today. Medical health, five to 10%. Insurance is 10 to 15%. 25 percent personal that that's what you get you, you have your personal account five to ten percent recreation five to ten percent in debt five to ten percent yeah so obviously your categories are going to be different depending on your right, right priorities and where you are in your baby step journey the other thing that's important to recognize and work into your plan is you can't pick the high end on everything because no. it won't, it'll exceed a hundred percent. Yeah. It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. And if you do the spreadsheets that we have, yeah, it does not work. You have no. to add up to a hundred percent. You can't do 200%. So if you do, you know, the high end of a percentage on one category, you're going to have to offset that by going on the low end and something else. And so that's why I say it depends on your priorities is because if you value eating out more than you do living in a fancy place, then maybe you find a tiny apartment somewhere that's really cheap, but you're, it allows you to dine out, you know, regularly. So this is about conscious spending and, you know, spend extravagant. Once you're, this is once you're out of debt, right? So I just right. let me make that clarification. Once you're out of debt and you're living the good life, you can spend extravagantly on the things that you really value, but then you better be a tightwad on things that you don't value. Right. You could burn through your money really quick. You could have a million dollars in the bank in, in investments. You could blow through that so quick. Yeah. So you still have to have discipline. Yeah, Being you a millionaire can't spend is not what you think. On everything, right. figure out what your what gives you the joy in life, and that's where you can spend money guilt free. Like if you re- and like I really love to travel, and it's killing me this year, right? Like yeah. not literally. Obviously, I'm fine, but uh, it, it's driving me bonkers, and that's what I value. So that's where I can spend money and not feel guilty. 
Mm. But it, I would feel awful if I were to buy like a thousand dollar pair of shoes just because they have red bottoms, you know? Gotcha. Hey, uh, question number five, a scam alert, which is common. I keep getting notifications of having unclaimed money from 2015 from an assistant job I had. I don't dare open the links because I worry of scams, but my interest is heightened. <laughs> there is indeed money being unclaimed. Has anyone done successfully? Lo- has anyone done and successfully located unclaimed money? Yes, I have. Yes. Yes, and I got. I found it on my state list my state will list the unclaimed money on a legitimate website um and that's why i would recommend you do what have you found uh yeah so you can find unclaimed money and usually it it, it, a lot of times that has to do with like you paid off a debt and maybe because of the timing of when you paid it off it, it was you paid off more than um than what was actually owed based on the calculated interest rates each day and how they add up right. and then you move somewhere and the, that place doesn't have your forwarding address so they don't know where to send back your you know extra couple dollars right yeah. so you might have that and then after seven to ten years it'll just go to the government so right. there are government websites that have the unclaimed money because that's mm-hmm. that's where it goes is to the government <laughs> if you don't claim right. it so you'll have to check each state that you've lived in mm-hmm. recently like the last 10 years or so and you can find and claim that money there. And so there are a lot of private companies out there that will make money by taking a percentage of that to notify you, you have unclaimed money. Mm -hmm. So you do not have to use these people. What they do is they go through, this is public information, by the way, they go through, they find the big ones and they contact you and say, Hey, we can help you get this money. All they're doing is filling out the form that you could have done yourself from that state. Best yeah. thing to do is so, do type in unclaimed money in your state and boom, like I just did for Maryland, mine came right up. I mean, yeah, state. you can actually go to unclaimed.org and it, it'll give you like you the link. You could just click on your state and it'll bring you to the free site for your state. There you go. And a lot of states uh, also participate in missingmoney.com and that's also a free website that um, is available for you to search the web, the databases. There you go. So check each state that you've lived in or done business in. Ooh, Mm -hmm. there you go. Okay, last question, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Want to start a Roth? Best one to go with and how much? That's the entire question. Okay, so I think this person is asking about a Roth IRA. Probably. Because again, Roth is is too general of a term. It's just how the money's classified for tax purposes. So you don't start a Roth, you start an IRA and then you designate it as Roth. So the best one to go with, it's it's really about best provider to go with who has IRA accounts that they manage. So we always recommend low cost providers like Fidelity, Vanguard and Schwab. Those are great low cost providers. Yes. And depending on your income level, you're going to want to check and make sure that it doesn't exceed this. You can, um, but the income levels are set by the IRS every year, uh, the income limits. So check the IRS's website for this year's limit or, or whatever year you're doing this. The um, the limit that you can contribute is $6,000 per year. So that's how much. Perfect. Can you tell everybody what a Roth is? This keeps popping up. I think people really get confused what a Roth really is. I'm both a 401k and IRA. Yeah, so Roth is just a fancy way of saying that the dollars that you contribute have already been taxed through income taxes. Yeah, and they exist in both. Yeah, yeah, so you're contributing post-tax dollars versus a traditional account, which could be either a 401k or an IRA, but traditional accounts are with pre-tax dollars. So you did not pay any income tax on it. You get to con- to reduce your taxable income by that amount each year, but you'll pay taxes on them once you start withdrawing them at retirement time. So mathematically, you would rather have the gains already take care of tax-free as opposed to paying the tax in the future. I would, yeah. Oh, I would. <laughs> and you can also take that initial deposit going into Roth out at any time, but the gains you can't take out till typically 59 and a half. Right. There you go. All right. Thank you, Amanda. You can find Amanda on Instagram and Twitter at Agile Amanda. And you can find me on all of your favorite social media platforms at 
Rockland, USA. Don't forget to check out the website and subscribe to the podcast. All the links are right there on the front page, rockonthemoney.com. Please subscribe and leave comments to our podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, or even your favorite app that you got right there on your phone. Those help us out a lot. If you're ever looking for a specific topic or content that we've produced over time, just go to the website and in the search bar, just type in your topic, be it 401k, stimulus check, or anything, and everything comes right up for you. We have so much gratitude that you've taken the time out of your day to listen to our podcast while you're walking, driving, traveling, or whatever you're doing. Please send us an email. Let us know how you're doing out there. Podcast at rocklandusa.com. So long, everybody. Thank you very much again. We'll see you again next time. All opinions expressed by the host are solely their own and do not reflect the views of any company, affiliates, or advertisers. Investments or strategies mentioned in the show may not be suitable for you. Before acting on any information in the show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and strongly consider seeking advice from your own financial or investment advisor.